Okay. Guys, I have one more question for you. Who of you are actually a designer today? Can you raise your hand? Okay. And developers? Okay. <laughs> okay, that counts for two. Cool. Now I just said uh, the big picture who, who we have in the public. Okay. I uh, gonna uh, take you through our journey of building design system for Green Choice. Uh, I'm organizer of the group and I'm also director of Angie Studio and we yeah, partner with innovative clients to, uh, and help them to solve their biggest problems, challenges. And design system for many, many in-house teams looks like a really big challenge. Um, we have uh, helped many organizations to set up design system and uh, we did last year in October also design system uh, survey about state of design system in the Netherlands. We were really curious because as an agency you do for many clients you set up design system but we were really curious. Yeah, that's what we do but how it's going with in-house teams, how it's going with another agency. So uh, more than 260 people, designers and front -end developers filled it in so it brought us a lot of interesting insights. Um, and today uh, I'm going to talk actually about uh, lean design system of Green Choice. For us, lean was, yeah, we didn't have a separate budget or it wasn't really a separate project. It just had to happen on the fly. Um, so I'm going to take you in process actually how it all began and how we built, uh, how we combine building a design system with regular scrum work. Because, yeah, you don't have time, you just have to do it if you need it. Actually, we are design and front -end development team within a green choice. So, um, yeah, which steps we took. So it's very chron chronological, actually, story how it all happened and what we have right now, and the biggest learnings uh, which I ask our product owner. Actually, tell us what have you learned from uh, what are the biggest uh, takeaways. Um, First one, when do you need a design system? It's not like you always need it. Do you experience any of this? Who of you experience any of these problems? Okay. Oh. <laughs> Doubting. Yeah, development becomes slower and slower. So you, n you not always need a design system, but if you see that your development becomes slower, uh, experience of users, are, yeah, a lot of inconsistencies basically, and you spend a lot of time in redundant design and code tasks. So you do a lot of things over and over again. Um, you, you have huge technical depth, for example, and design depth in struggling to collaborate effectively. So it's, yeah, if you have any of this, then you probably need it. And if you don't, you probably don't need it. Um, if you do experience that problems and you need a design system, what you can gain from it, it's uh, yeah, really less development and design time. Very simple. Mostly people do want that. <laughs> uh, easy, flexible to scale, faster time to market, better product quality. And last but not least, more efficient collaboration. So green choice. How it all began? I thought I'll go just really back in time, <laughs> 2014. Uh, it started, uh, of course, like most of the projects of design agencies start, we won a big pitch and we, yeah, we could redo whole green choice .nl, so very cool. Yeah, you had this and then you come up with a whole new concept and you rethink whole thing, the beautiful project. The beginning is always good. Um, then, they came another project, and another one, and another one, and another one, and more. Very cool, and more, <laughs> and more. Everything was a separate project. Um, we see in many companies project-based uh, approach. It doesn't mean that you don't scrum, but your whole thinking is limited to a project. So it's very much design driven, it's fun, um, there can be small waterfalls or small scrum projects. Um, it's a very much short term, but once project in organization is finished, you're done with it, you don't think back about it. Um, very unpredictable and little to no consistency between the project because you're focused very much on the project and not on the whole thing. 
So as a result, everything was um, custom built and designed. It all had a look and feel of a green choice. It was very much green choice, but we haven't thought about reusability so much at that time. We are mostly reinventing buttons. <laughs> Looked like this. They were all kind of yellow. Yeah, it was very much green choice button, but they were all slightly different. Um, then 2017 came a big change. We actually switched to Scrum for all the projects. So it was continuous Scrum for all the project went basically in the same pipeline. We had one multidisciplinary team, so we were working together with the marketing people, with, with content, with developers, backend developers, frontend developers, designers, so every, everybody's in the same team. We have one backlog. A uh, very lean approach, yeah, lean, I meant in small steps. <laughs> for us, was it in small steps, basically? And a continuous sprint, so it's ongoing. Um, very predictable velocity and very data-driven. So everything which is designed is also tested before it's implemented. So everything goes through a B test. Basically, it sounds like music, isn't it? Then, <laughs> What do you think? It felt a little bit like this for designers because the train was going and we were on board, but this was moving very, very slowly. Um, and everything was actually, instead of, you said, well, oh, switch to s continue Scrum and everything will go slowly faster, but it was actually slowing down due to tons of legacy um, in design and in code. We actually discovered a uh, formula of uh, chaos or Wildgroei uh, in Dutch. The more time you spend, uh, the more people are involved, the more products you are doing, and we had a lot of products. Seriously, you don't see maybe as a consumer how many products energy supplier can have. That's a lot. And you get complete chaos. So basically, we're still reinventing different UI, which was kind of all looking like a green shirt, but it was all very different. And what about the code? We basically went through all different projects which we had because there were a lot of projects. And yeah, there was very little to no consistency between the files we were using one project. Uh, we wanted to move it all to one code base and it was kind of conflicting, biting each other. So yeah. What was practically leading to, you had, imagine you have a one component on a page, product page of greenchoice.nl and you wanted to use the same component for registration flow, but this was one uh, frontend, let's say, and this was a bootstrap uh, based frontend, so actually you had to rewrite the blog. I, could, I can still perfectly remember how we did, I think, 10 times cookie bar. The same cookie bar, but it had different code bases, so for developers it was just 10 times more work. Basically, we had a car, it was driving, it was very, very difficult to maintain. So at this point, yeah, again, we wanted to move all the different JS files, CSS, separate project, different repositories to one code repository. It started very much from a technical perspective because it just wasn't going as fast as you wanted it to go. And I think the most important thing was that we um, change our mindset from very cool, yeah, design uh, project, like, can we actually make it? That's so, that's awesome, you know, and uh, especially if you think about campaigns, you know, ah, cool, let's do it. So can we actually maintain what we are doing without losing our mind? That was for us a very big difference, actually. And um, in the meantime, 2018, so we started really looking at component-based workflow. And first thing that how we started is actually looking at the pattern lab. Uh, who of you is familiar with atomic design? Okay, okay. So we very much applied atomic design to, uh, uh, yeah, as our approach. And at that time, the first project we did completely based on the pattern lab was uh, Green Choice Energy Dichtbei. And yeah, it was all built in, in pattern lab, so we had all atoms and molecules and organisms and patterns and templates. 
yeah, you could really see the code and design, so it's really the part of, yeah, you see w how your design looks, how it's built together. Um, but very soon as the library grew, we experienced that Pattern Lab is actually very difficult to navigate. You have this enormous menus. Um, atoms, molecules, organism, like uh, you named, yeah, it's very difficult to communicate with an organization. Try to explain to a marketing manager, are you looking now at the atom or molecule or organism, especially the bond between organism and molecules, and myself, I'm not really getting it uh, by now. It's, it's yeah, oh, 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 it's a component. Um, so we see it in many, many organizations, like you just mentioned that you yeah, skip that part at the uh, uh, factory. We also, yeah, so it's just not working. And for us also the problem was that there was no possibility to add documentation to component and or template in a pattern library. So it wasn't really, it was a good try, but it didn't really work as a single source of true. So it's January 2018, we, at this point, there was not so many different pattern, different as native, so we really compared Pattern Lab and Fractal at that point. Um, and again, the reason why we take something as a base was just because we don't have much extra budget or time to do it ourselves. So yeah, you can build anything custom if you have unlimited time and budget, but you don't, so. At this point, we looked again, compared these two, and uh, yeah, we compared also, this is a tool which our front-end developers use a lot, so we wanted that it would work for them, also good. Um, and yeah, it runs both, actually run on Goop, so it's a very similar, and for Fractal was a big advantage that you could put, actually store different files uh, within one component. And it was actually uh, much more easy to customize, to navigate, and you could add your own documentation. So for us, it was the basically a good choice to switch to Fractal. And in the meantime, that's the code uh, story. In the meantime, there came new, uh, brand new building, uh, branding style. It looked like this for commercial. So the Lamps is a company who's doing, doing advertisement and uh, no, they imagine very creative commercials. And basically we were asked, okay, all these different products and sites, we want them all like this. Now, <laughs> okay. This was actually also for us the first step when we said, okay, well, let's, let's do it on Fractal. And the first design in the new style and we actually build it all within a fractal environment. So it was very, yeah, all component based, really, yeah, nice, nice beginning. But then came another project, and again, Green Choice runs a lot of advertising campaign, a lot of campaigns, basically. So you can imagine some months could be five different campaigns with totally different content, to totally different things. But at this point, we thought, okay, we have this new fractal environment, so we'll put everything in fractal environment. So this thing also went in fractal. So every new thing we made went in the component library, and it grew big. <laughs> and documentation in process, we were missing it. We're the component library. So our website started looking basically a little bit like this. We had parts of a new style and parts of old style. Uh, so our conclusion was component library alone didn't fix really a problem. We still had a problem. And that was the actually the, the, the point where we as a design team said, well, we really need a design system. So we had a component library. And how we see a design system, it's really a single source of truth. But of course, you have a, a UI kit. It could be, uh, um, it can, can be sketch library. It can be anything else, any design tools that you use. You have a, a component library for developers. 
which is great. I mean, Fractal is, or Pattern Lab, or whatever. There are a lot of alternatives that are great for developers, very difficult for the rest of organization. And you have really single source of truth where everything comes together, where especially documentation leaves, which is used by the whole company together. They are interconnected. So it's not, they, they are not living separately. But they are really connected together. So first step in May 2018, um, we started with component inventory or design audit. It has different names. But actually it actually was a very fun workshop where we cut the whole thing, everything what Green Choice had, in all small pieces. So we actually did together with the whole team inventory. It's really fun. You get team really on board. And you, ha you get insight in all the depths that you have, actually. And you get insight, what is the whole backlog you are dealing with? Where do, do we start, actually? What, we, what do we want to change? This was the base, basic, basically, like you see USPs. OK, that is all type of USPs we have. Or this is our headers, or this is our testimonials. How do they look? So you get this really building blocks, the components that you really need to transition into your design system. And then we did a second workshop to define the process roles, definition of done, and agreements. How do we really actually work together? Um, get a lot of questions who's actually involved in like, these type of works. Yeah, actually everybody, the whole team. So it's product owners, marketing, content specialists, front -end developers in our case, uh, backend developers and UX designers. So we had really the whole team on board. And in this workshop we really looked at, okay, what is the process? How do we actually work together? So uh, if you want to uh, create a new design uh, system, if you add a new component to your design system, which steps do you have to go through? Uh, before we had a uh, process, clear process in place, it could be that we already started building a new design, but it wasn't tested yet, for example. So it had to go back. So this really helped. And also, who is involved in each step? And what is the definition of done? So when is design completed, basically? Which criteria it should satisfy? This is how it looks. It's in Dutch. Uh, so new design story. I think the, the step which changed for us a lot was, is it existing component? Uh, 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 so it's about updating the existing component, the stamp co template of component update. Uh, do we need really a new component, or we don't need any new component? Or So basically, can we reuse it? Do we need to create new one, or can we update existing one, add something extra to it? The definition of done. Uh, the testing, so does it need to be A-B tested? Mostly yes, but still. Uh, new story for the front-end front -end development. Definition of done for front-end development again. It's added to a fractal. It goes through back-end development. The definition of done for back-end development. Acceptation. Life. With Green Choice, we did it really uh, basically uh, by uh, sketching the process. Right now, we're using uh, the process puzzle. We developed basically a tool which makes it much more fun to do with your team to define the process. It's much more like a game. It's fun, and you don't have you don't get all your hands and everything dirty by because this is really a, a process. You have to agree on something, so you will be moving steps a lot together. Uh, we did this exercise with really many companies, and basically the process is every time different. There is no ideal process. You don't. You do, there is not like guideline. That's the way you should do it. The process is just what works for you for your team. So building design system next to all as a scrum work, yeah, how you do it when you don't have time. For us actually it was very, very useful that we, um, we kept apart 20% of our time, basically six design, uh, six uh, story points per sprint of two weeks. So it's very little, but still we knew that the six uh, story points would guarantee that this time will be spent on design system stories. And communication is very important. So actually, all design system stories were included in B-weekly demos. 
Um, and we also communicated roadmaps uh, and the planning. So everybody in the organization was actually up to date and involved. So I'm talking not about only about design team or marketing team, but uh, uh, really different stakeholders from different teams were yeah, knew actually where we were standing, which steps, how our backlogs look, and what are the next steps, when they can expect what in a design system. The thing that also really helped us from the design audit was creating actually clear templates in the Jira. Again, we are one team with the developers uh, and product owners and marketing uh, people. So how do you ask for a new component? So it's actually really uh, explained if you look, for example, at the test, uh, text media, uh, no, well, uh, quotes. What can quote element exist of? It can be a quote, an author, and an image, rating. And you have clear examples, and already also always in, I included um, examples from uh, uh, design audit. So you always had a clear, okay, that's how it looks on the different sites right now. And this is what it should, which component should you have, which part. So you can, for that now, create a new thing. And then, um, so that was the, c the very good beginning of having clear definition of role, process, and uh, yeah. Uh, definition of done basically um, and then um, this point we started building also UI kit we chose for sketch library in that case and basically everything what was in the style guide originally we moved to the sketch so we started with the uh, fundaments primary colors secondary colors basically um, spacing topography this topography was really clear you have to test it in the browser because otherwise yeah <laughs> You don't know how it will. Um, so after we um, put the bases together, we start building the components. Yeah, all the textbook, everything what different sites were using. Yeah, really, a blocks, Q&A, whatever. And we had a huge sketch library, but all with the things that are used. And then we started building templates. Again, we, uh, we did inventory of all templates that are used. And it's part of our backlog. So all the templates are built from the components. So you first put the fundaments together, then you do the components, and then from these components you can create templates. So the whole Green Choice pro uh, project is actually ongoing kind of transition from the old thing to the new one. How you can see it, and right now, most of the site is already in the from the design system. And then was the part of documentation, and for that we chose for DSM. It was the most easiest and quick solution, and it's accessible for the whole team, also content people. So what you, yeah, we kept it very, it's very lean. It's very small, basically very simple, but. Um, the good thing is that the content people and the marketing people could just start working in themselves. They added their brand style uh, uh, criteria, their tone of voice. Um, this is for a few months ago, this uh, capture, but right now it's, it's, you really see that it starts leaving. I think the one of the big successes also that you see it's not only more designers and developers who are using it, but uh, it's also the rest of the stakeholders who are really involved in uh, um, maintaining the design system. And using it. No, not the. No, no, it's tested with the customers, and the learning are included. Um, yeah. So basically, this is our documentation platform, DSM, and from this we link to. Uh, um, uh, right now, Envision DSM doesn't support automatical linking, but we link manually to uh, components in uh, Fractal. So it's kind of, you can really go from one to another. You see, like, link to component library. So you can really see how it looks in the browser and in, 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 uh, in code, let's say. And uh, you, can, you have also download, so you can go also and use the sketch library. And the last part, I ask, of course, the client also, well, Jeroen, <laughs> what did you learn? What were your most important takeaways uh, from building this yeah, green choice design system? For him, it was the yeah, start small. Um, 
it, it was basically really reserving this time, really little of your time, this 20% of the time that your team has for a design system. Let's just start doing it. Don't make a big project of it. Don't make it really a separate project, but just start. Share it and make it easily, uh, easy to contribute. I think for him was the, the biggest advantage is the DSM, let's say, that the whole company was started to be involved and that it was constantly shared. So every single step on the way was demoed and shared within the company. And the last but not least, that's not how as a designer I would look at it, but uh, for a product owner was, yeah, design system saves you money. So I asked him, yeah, give an example, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah, if before new campaign, uh, uh, putting, setting up a new campaign for, uh, without a design system, we would talk about days. Just theoretically two days for design, some four days for front end, the back end implementation, well, ten days something. And now with the design system, it's just more click and play. It's, it's really like we're talking about hours. Yeah, we, uh, I think it's very good mentioned, of course, uh, by you uh, that, yeah, the, the struggle which we see with many in-house teams that they just don't have, they actually experience exactly the same problem as we had. Uh, they don't have, yeah, time to do it, mostly. So it's very difficult to get buy-in within your organization. Uh, and you can't lift it from the ground. So we talked to, we talk to many people who are coming to events. I was say, yeah, we really need it because we have such a huge design depth and it takes so, it goes so slow and we are doing the same things and just simply can't get it off the ground. So what we uh, offer now is afternoon session to get your boss and team on board. It's a workshop. And it's fun to do. And uh, yeah, we share a lot of tools. So if you're curious about tools that we are using uh, when we build our design system, you can download from our website. <coughs> yeah, I think we're almost to the Q&A. Yeah, one more thing. We visit a lot of companies for design system <coughs> safari. So at the end of the Q&A session, you will get the feedback forms. Uh, because we share, we blog a lot of about different design systems. So we visited IBM Amro, NVB, um, Funda. We go again to di really different companies and we write about them. So if you think that your design, if you have a design system and you think that it's really worth sharing your story, please let us know. And we have one job. <laughs> so interested applying? Talk to me. Okay. I think now it's time for Q&A, actually. <laughs>